Dr. Regina Banks Hall soaring to new heights.
understand the airline industry. And I, and I need to talk to, I should have talked to Sue and I would have learned uh, so much about that. And I was trying to understand uh, pilots and what it was necessary to work in the air traffic controller uh, department because I was trying to understand how you take something that's on the ground and you get it in the air. And then I wanted to translate that to us. How can I look at myself and recognize that I'm walking on the ground, I have a vision, but I'm trying to soar. I'm trying to go upward, I'm trying to move. And so sometimes my husband would come home. Uh, and if I wasn't at the university teaching, I would be in my office in the basement and I was engaging in flight check, operations as you will. And so I'd be sitting there and I would be like, this is Dr. Regina Baggins Hall. Oh, all passengers are like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, so we, go, we were just waiting for clearance from the air traffic controller. And then I would, uh, I'm talking to my passengers now. So then I would say, you know what, this is Dr. Baggins Hall. We have been cleared for takeoff. Please sit back and relax. And when we get to a cruising altitude, the flight attendants now I'm talking about the other presenters. They will come to the cabin and give you a motivational speech in your favorite beverage. And so I was engaging <laughs> in what I was trying to do because I was trying to motivate myself as well as thinking about you. And so my husband, he would come home. Now, he's been at work all day and I've been at home. And so he would come in and I'm downstairs in the basement. And he's like, uh, what are you doing? And I'm doing any lights. Um, <laughs> us and pushes us. 
So you have to look at your vision. You know, what is it that I want to do? Where am I trying to go? And remember that it is your critical piece of equipment because now you can build everything around your vision when you understand what your vision is. So as you think about yourself, as you get ready to soar, you want to look at and understand what is my critical piece of equipment. And I wanted to share with you guys today that the critical piece of equipment is your vision. So double check your vision and make sure that that, that you have a good understanding of it and that you will use that to move forward. The third item that I want to talk about is that sometimes as leaders, we have to make sure that we can troubleshoot problems. Because problems will come. We will find that we are engaged in what we are trying to do and that we have to be able to navigate how we move forward. We have to understand how do I stay in charge of what is important for me as it relates to me moving forward. And so there are a couple of things that I want to share. One of the key things for troubleshooting problems, if I am a pilot, I will make sure that once I get in the air, I can handle some challenges because I have passengers on board my plane. And so I have a responsibility to make sure that I do the best that I can to get them to their destination. And so for us as individuals, we have to be able to apply that same strategy as it relates to our business. We have to make every moment count, meaning that we're not wasting our time, but we're allocating it and using it correctly to benefit what we're trying to do. We also have to, I believe, start with the end in mind when you take on a millionaire's attitude. Because when you start to treat your business the way that you want it to be, you will see that things are changing. You will make the right decisions. You will meet the right people. You will engage in projects because you have that millionaire mindset and you're starting it the way that you want it to end. And so when you start it the way that you want it to end, everything is going to work out. And then finally, stretch yourself. Sometimes we need to push ourselves. I love that Linda will call us and say, I have a project for you I need you to work on. Because she recognizes that we need to push. And sometimes we have to push ourselves. Because when we do, we find that the challenge is not so bad. Another key point is that when you are troubleshooting problems, you're troubleshooting what is required for your business, we have to take ownership. Meaning that we have to recognize that the vision is ours and not someone else. I mean, how many of you have spent time engaging in someone else's venture? I mean, you're happy, you support it, but you know, sometimes you can take it or leave it, can't you? <laughs> and so it is important that when you are determining what you want to do for yourself, that the vision is yours and not <coughs> someone else's. And then the final area that I want to talk about here is that it is important to understand commitment. Because commitment helps you determine that you're willing to see it through, meaning you will go all the way through the end. So let me give you an example. Can you imagine, for those of you that flew in here today, that you flew in and the pilot came over the loudspeaker and he says, there is some really bad weather ahead. Now normally when a pilot tells you that, some additional instructions are coming, right? Put on your seat, bell, you know, bring your chair up. What if the pilot put the plane on autopilot and he just leaped out the window with a parachute? <laughs> <laughs> so that meant what did I tell you? That he wasn't really committed to the vision, was he? <laughs> he wasn't committed. He went to pilot school, he was engaged, but he wasn't committed to getting you to safety. And the reason why this is so important is because in order to soar, in order to do the things that you want to do, you have to look at yourself as a pilot. And the reason why you're looking at yourself as a pilot is because you're trying to get to your destination. And you have passengers aboard your plane. And those passengers are your clients. They're the people that you're trying to mentor. They are the people that are counting on you for their deliverance. They are the people that you're trying to reach. And so as you get ready to soar, you want to look at your passengers, the people that will benefit from your services. And the reason why this is so important at commitment time, because that's the time when you will be challenged. You know, that's the time that you want to give up, but you have to keep pushing. That's the time that you're just saying, you know what, I'll do something else. But when you understand your commitment level, that'll help you. That'll cause you to push forward because you recognize there are people that are counting on 
me and I need to be there. I need to be strong so I can help them move forward. So now the last item that we will talk about today, and this is important, is that as leaders, we have to unpack excess baggage. And I love the airline industry. So the airline industry has said that if we allow every passenger on board the plane, if we fill up every seat, and they all bring luggage, if we do not put any regulations on them, they'll just bring everything, and that can overweight the plane. So sometimes for us as individuals, there are some things that we need to unpack that can hinder us from success. And so now what I want to do is share with you what you need to unpack, and then we'll talk about what you need to pack. And one of the things that we have to unpack is we have to unpack fear. And the reason why we have to unpack fear, because fear is false evidence appearing real. And I need you guys to understand that it is not real. How many of you by a show of hands have been afraid of something? And how many of you were able to overcome that fear? Okay. And how many of you just, and it's free if you want to share, you're still feeling afraid of something right now. Maybe there's something out there. Okay, so there is a couple of us. So I want to confront that today. And I want you to say these words with me because we can take charge of fear because it is an emotion. And so we can contain it because one of the things is that fear keeps us from moving forward. And when you often overcome it, you find out it really wasn't that bad at all. So what I want you to say with me uh, and repeat this after me. I may be cautious. I may be cautious. But after today, but after today I, will not be afraid. I will not be afraid. And I wanted you to say that because I want you to know that you are in control. Remember, you're the pilot. And so you can handle that. It all depends on how you take charge of your life. The second item that we need to unpack is we need to unpack work. Worry causes us to worry about meeting someone, talking to someone, stepping outside our comfort zone. And so we have have to, as business leaders, make our decision and move forward. And I just want to share with you, when you do, life is so much better. And that really the only thing that you guys have to worry about in this room today is, is hiring an accountant. Because when you <laughs> hire the right accountant, you will need them when your book becomes a bestseller and your business blows up. So don't worry about that. to people that can help us and bless us. You know, we're all business women. We all have a vision, but sometimes we need a little help. We need to talk to someone that has a better idea. And so my best recommendation here is to let the price go and reach out to the people that will help you with success. The final item that I want to talk about what we need to unpack <coughs> is negativity. <laughs> And the reason why we want to unpack negativity is because it is a feeling of gloom and doom as it relates to our success because we begin to change our attitude and opinion about who we are and what we're trying to do. And then the final issue with negativity, we are surrounded by negative people, right? They're pulling at us because they recognize that we're on the move. We're trying to do something different with our life, that we're making changes. And so I have a recommendation, because remember, you are a pilot. So you take the negative people, and you take their negative feelings, and you just lead them at the airport. <laughs> 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 and there's a note of you that drove in here, and you brought negative people here, you just lead them here in Kentucky. <laughs> about what you need to pack. And one of the first things that you need to pack, courage. Mm -hmm. And you pack your courage because courage 
allows you to face new challenges, step outside your comfort zone. And so sometimes we have to act just like that cowardly lion and the wizard of Oz. We have to, as they say, man up and go fight that wicked witch. Um, finally, another thing that we have to pack is faith. Faith allows you to believe in something that you cannot see. And often what we struggle with is seeing ourselves as a success. And so you believe in your faith, believe in what you cannot see, and use that to push you to move forward. I say, you know, carry your faith along with you everywhere you go. The third item that we need to pack is vision. Vision is important because vision is the fuel that's going to motivate you. Because it's how you're building your business. It is the piece of your equipment that is important. And you guys, is when you see your vision, it should you should have it with you everywhere that you go. I recommend that you treat your vision just like your American Express card. You never leave home without it. <laughs> the fourth item that you need to pack is confidence. Confidence is critical. We've all heard the expression that confidence is key. And so it's important for you to look at yourself because when you lift your confidence in who you are, you understand that you can move forward. So during the break today, as you're out on Main Street, go ahead, you know, strut yourself outside. You know, pack it, pass out your business card, introduce yourself to someone, let them know what you have to offer because you are reminding yourself of who you are what you have to offer, how your product and service will bless them. Remember, it's not just about us, it's about the people that come into our lives. And then the final thing that we have to pack is resilience. We have to have flexibility and be able to bounce back when we have been knocked down. How many of you have been knocked down? And you bounce back, right? And the reason why I know you bounce back because you're sitting here in this room today. We heard a compelling story last evening from Nicole, and that shows how she was able to bounce back from what she went through. And so for those of us that haven't had that experience, when you find yourself in that condition and you've been knocked down by your opponent, I want you to just get back up and just brush yourself off and get in that boxing position. Remember, Muhammad Ali said you were the greatest, and so when you look at your opponent and get ready and say, you know, you may have knocked me down, but I am up and I am ready for round three. As I get ready to close, when we unpack our luggage of excess baggage and we pack our luggage with the things that will help us, courage, vision, we can move forward. We can start our journey, change our journey, do whatever it is that we need to do to make sure that we achieve success. We take an ownership, we find our passion, we are optimistic about our future. Now the journey is not always going to be easy. It will be hard work and we will experience some turbulence, but in the end, we have a good co a good pilot ourselves and a good co-pilot, our team of coaches and mentors and friends and confidant people that support us. And because we use that, we can weather any storm and reach our cruising altitude. When you leave this conference this weekend and you are repacking your luggage, I want you to take out that excess baggage that you have. I want you to take a sheet of paper and write a note and tell the housekeeping staff, please throw these items away. I no longer need them because I am soaring to new heights. Thank you.